We come to the Lord's table each week to obey Jesus' command to remember him. And this morning I want to look at one of the most dramatic life changes in scripture. So turn with me to Acts chapter 8. And there are men in the front here with Bibles that they'd love to put one in your hand. If you don't have a Bible, this is yours to keep. Just raise your hand and they'll pass them out. Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 1. Scripture says, Now Saul was in hearty agreement with putting Stephen to death. And on that day, a great persecution began against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And some devout men buried, buried Stephen and made loud lamentation over him. But Saul began ravaging the church, entering house after house and dragging off men and women. He was delivering them into prison. And then turn one page over to chapter 9. And verse 1 says, Now Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, both men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Saul had a hate for these Christians. He thought he knew God, and he thought he was acting for God. But he was sorely mistaken. Instead of finishing this story in this chapter, I want to jump ahead to Saul's testimony of his conversion in Acts 26. So go ahead and go there with me. This is now that same man, except he's on trial for his life. In fact, he uses the testimony of his conversion as a defense in this trial. He uses his conversion as the reason he is preaching Christ. Let's pick it up, Acts 26, starting in verse 12. While so engaged as I was journeying to Damascus with the authority and the commission of the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining all around me, and those who were journeying with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. And I said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise up and stand on your feet. For this purpose I have appeared to you, to appoint you a servant and a witness, not only to the things which you have seen, but also to the things which I will appear to you, rescuing you from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the authority of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by me in faith. So King Agrippa, I do not prove disobedient to the heavenly vision, but kept declaring both to those in Damascus first and also at Jerusalem, then throughout all the region of Judea and even to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, practicing deeds appropriate with repentance. What took a man that would breathe threats and murders against a disciple to now proclaim Jesus? I see three reasons here. So I'm going to walk through them really quickly. The first one is he recognized Jesus as God. Jesus gave him a clear and concise explanation of the gospel. Oh, wait. He immediately knew who he, who he was talking to. Verse 15 says, And I said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. There was no questioning it. And then he had a new understanding of the gospel. Jesus gave him a clear and concise explanation of the gospel. Look at verse 18 again. 
He was turning from darkness to life shows a dramatic life change that comes from repentance. Receiving forgiveness of sins and an inheritance shows the need for a savior and that we cannot earn our salvation by anything we do. And finally, the pinnacle of the gospel, Jesus, being sanctified by faith in Jesus. He was the one that went to the cross. He was the one that took our penalty. He was the only way that Saul could be saved. Saul knew every other part of the Bible, except he missed Jesus. And so he missed everything. And so he was obedient to Jesus's command. He now understood the fullness of the gospel and changed completely. He went from breathing threats and locking up Christians to sharing the gospel wherever the Lord sent him. Now I know that none of us in our unregenerate state was going house to house breathing threats, but in our hearts, we were against God in the same way. Our hearts were fully against his desires. The same gospel that transformed Saul transformed every single believer in this room. As Jesus said it, our eyes were open to turn from darkness to light, from the authority of Satan to God. We have received forgiveness of sins and an inheritance because we were sanctified by our faith in Jesus. How awesome is that? The message that Jesus gave Saul and then Saul gave King Agrippa is the exact message we received and are commanded to remember this morning. Which means that the same passion that Paul had in his ministry is in each of us. This is a story of a dramatic conversion, but the same dramatic conversion happened to every believer in this room. And my request of you this morning is that while you hold the cup and the cracker, you thank God for dramatically changing you. But I also have a question. Is your, fame, is your faith firmly put in Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus is the son of a living God? He came to die for your sins, and by that death on the cross, you have life in his name? If you believe that, praise God. Let's take communion together. But if you don't, please let the elements pass by and spend this time reflecting on where your heart stands before God. Do you believe that you have the same heart that Saul had when he was going from house to house dragging off men and women? Scripture tells me that you do. Reflect on that and then reach out to someone after the service and learn what it means to have this dramatic conversion. Men, please serve us.